Welcome back, everyone. I'm here again with Preston Dennett. This is going to be the follow on episode to achieving an out of body experience or an OBE. In the previous episode, we talked about what an OBE is, how to do it, and Preston's first or initial experiences and in learning about how to move around in, in that environment. So with that, Preston, you know, to summarize, you were starting to have these experiences, but you'd be so excited that you'd snap right back in into your body. And then eventually you taught yourself or you reminded yourself to calm down, to stop so you didn't snap back. What happened after that? Yeah, that took a while because... I was able to slowly extend my experiences from three seconds to five seconds to a minute to two minutes to 10 minutes to an hour and sometimes longer. But even to this day, it's not often it's just a few minutes because it is difficult to stay out of body and remain aware. But if you're motivated and believe me, when you start having these experiences, it will motivate you (laughs) because it's like discovering, well, it is a whole new world. It is like walking into a virtual reality, but it's not virtual, it's real. Uh, It's like walking into a video game kind of and having an avatar and being able to do all these really amazing things. So by this point, I had big sizable library on out-of-body experiences, describing what people had done, like going to the other side, or visiting locations on Earth, visiting people, you know, doing all these experiments. And so that became sort of my go-to. It's like, okay, if this person did it, so can I. And initially, I just wanted to explore the physical world. It can be very dreamlike in the beginning. And it makes you question reality to a huge extent. Like, am I going out of my mind or am I going out of my body? Is this really real? I need to know. And that became an early sort of goal of mine to prove it to myself, which I was able to do. And it wasn't initially easy, but one day I popped out of body and I'm just flying around and found myself at a location some distance from my home. This was in Canoga Park. I had moved out of the family home some years earlier and was flying at daytime under this bridge not far from my house, the LA river, sort of, so it's the cemented in river. And looking down, I saw that there was a huge patch of soil and grass and trash and it was growing. I thought, well, this has got to be fake. I mean, this can't be real. There's no way grass is growing on a cemented river. And, uh, and I was kind of disappointed. I'm like, shoot, you know, I'm, I'm maybe imagining all of this after all. But you know what? I know exactly where this is. I'm going to go back to my body and physically go here, which is exactly what I did. I flew back to my little condo and uh, popped down into my body, which is a really weird feeling. <laughs> Woke up and quickly wrote it down because it's easy to forget. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, this is going to be my mission today. I made, made myself a nice strong cup of coffee and off I went. I could have walked there. I mean, it was, well, no, probably not. It's a little bit too far to walk. So I drove and uh, went and parked on this bridge and climbed down to the edge of the LA River and got that an enormous shock when I saw that. It, yes, it was exactly what I had seen. There was a huge earthen patch of soil there growing with grass. And it was accurate down to the little water bottles, you know, the bleached 7-Up can. It was such a trip to see something physically that you had seen out of body. Because, you know, you go to your friend's house, but you already know what that looks like. You know, and so it's hard to verify events when you already know where everything is. When you're doing that and you're, as you said, going to your friend's house, in one of Robert Monroe's books, he describes going and, and visiting people and in some of those experiences those people suddenly notice him like there's another aspect of them that and sometimes communicate directly to him without their conscious awareness when if he when he went back and talked to him they're like what are you what are you talking about so there's like the, it's like they had this uh, this otherworldly awareness that they weren't conscious of in our 
reality, like our current reality. Have yeah. you had experiences like that? Or is that something that is kind of Robert Monroe specific? No, it's certainly not. Specific. I have had that. And it is disconcerting, to say the least. A lot of my siblings, well, some of them were, are very skeptical of this stuff. And so it's hard to approach them with this and say, oh, I was over at your house and you were talking to me because they don't. Yeah, like, look, look, it's a serious people, right? Or people who would who, who consider themselves serious people would, you know, have, would have a tendency of dismissing this as something that's not real. And like I said, from the literature, there's enough consistency. And even people who are terrified by it and don't even refer to these experiences as OBEs, there's a consistent reporting of the stages that you talked about, even when they don't even know what they're talking about with sleep paralysis and things like that. Even like when you hear someone talk about sleep paralysis, there's, they talk about this vibrational state. They talk about seeing colors and hearing loud noises and feeling this electrical charge course through them. And then they report other things like seeing like these figures hovering above them, which who knows what they are, but there's enough out there, even with near-death experiences where people report seeing things above them or outside that they po- po- couldn't possibly see from, you know, their, from, be, from sitting in a bed. So in other words, there's enough in the literature to at least convince me that there's something to this. And, you know, again, the U.S. military has invested in this in the past, at least in the last three decades. So yeah. there's something to it. You you will know it when you have your first OBE. I mean, right. there's just no doubt in your mind. And if you read the literature on it, I mean, yeah, you'll experience everything that people are writing about. And it is awesome. Um, it can be a, difficult at first. Because I'd pop out of my body, I could not move. I'd be there in the middle of the room, flapping my arms. Like, how do I get to the doorway? I couldn't do it. And finally, I realized, you know, through trial and error, uh, it's about willpower. You will yourself forward. Because I'm like, like, I can't move. (laughs) And my vision was very cloudy at first. And that took a while to just kind of shake my head and and, you know, I'm somewhat nearsighted. When you're out of body, you can see perfectly. In fact, you can focus on far distances and zoom in. And if you're, as you progress, you can start to widen your vision so that you can see 360 degrees, which is really disorienting at first, but amazing. Yeah, you can see but, but a lot more back, detail. To, to go back before I interrupted you, you were talking about skeptical members of your family and people being able to see you or recognize you when you're out of body but not remember it yeah often they wouldn't see you you'd be wandering around their house and they're just doing their thing watching tv or whatever and you're, you're standing in front of them you're like hey <laughs> hello hello and uh boy i tried over and over again to the point where i pretty much gave up on mm-hmm. my family members finally i did find someone who had had out of body experiences i went to her house and she saw me full on looked at me and spoke to me. I couldn't believe it. Uh, She was on the phone when I saw her. I mean, I went to her house in Florida and looked at her. I'm like, oh, there she is. (laughs) And she whirled around and she looked at me. She was on her phone and she said, I can't talk now. I'm being robbed. And And I'm like, oh, shoot, you know, and that pulled me right back in and we're good friends. She called me the next morning and we're just talking. I'm like, well, maybe I thought this all up because I think she would have mentioned if she was robbed right away, right? And she wasn't. And then suddenly she says, oh, you came to me last night. I saw you. I'm like, you did? She's like, yes, I was on the phone and uh, I saw you. <laughs> I'm like, really? What did you, cause you talked to me. What did you say? And she says, well, I said, I can't talk now. I'm on, I'm on the phone with Rob. I'm like, oh, shoot, I misheard you. I thought you said I'm being mm-hmm. robbed. But it was enough verification for me because I was in the right room. I saw her. She was on the phone. And she told me this. <laughs> so that was like, wow, okay, she saw me. Like, how did she see you, though? Did she see you, like, full on? Or did she see, like, an uh, apparition? Like, what, what was the, did she ever describe yeah. how you appeared to her? She sure did. Yeah, as an apparition, but 
Um, when I'm out of body, I, I'm much younger. My hair grows back. And uh, you know, I used to be quite buff <laughs> when I was a young man. <gasps> and uh, she's like, you looked amazing. She says, you were really muscular. You looked really good. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I look awesome. Everyone does when they're out of body. They revert back to a younger state. And it's amazing because I had great hair when I was a young man. <laughs> I lost it in my late 20s. She described me to a T. And it was funny because it was like a week later, I'm in bed and suddenly I wake up because someone's in my room and I'm shocked and I open my eyes and the room is filling with light. And it's her, Dolly is her name, standing next to my bed in this golden aura around her. She's a full on apparition. I'm like, holy (laughs) Dolly, oh my God, it's you. And she's just grinning from ear to ear. And uh, I called her up. And I'm like, Dolly, she's like, did you see me? I'm like, yes, I did. She just turned about fair play. You surprised the heck out of me when you came to my house. So I thought I would, you know, come to yours. You could also see her as an apparition? I sure could, yeah. And what yeah. does that look like? Is it just like transparent? Um, she looked real to me. It's different in that she was glowing with this golden light and this inner light just glowing, glowing, glowing. But yeah, I mean, she looked normal. I've really examine this because someone asked me once how are you dressed when you're out of body I'm like you know i never really even looked i debated asking you that question oh, but i figured cool. i'd let it go <laughs> but since you brought it out i might, might as well answer. yeah i mean i sleep in my underwear i figure gosh am i wandering around you know in my underwear <laughs> this is going to be embarrassing like but no i popped out of body one day and i'm like okay let's someone asked me this let's look and look down and i'm wearing a button-down shirt one that you know, I'd wear to work. But I no longer had it physically, but it was one I used to have. <laughs> and shoes and pants, the full deal. The, another time, I I'm like, well, let's examine my body more. So I, I stripped, I undressed <laughs> completely, and just examined my body. I'm like, wow, you know, I look real young. I'm buff. Um, you're mu- much more unblemished. You can look at your hands and everything. And uh, yeah, you look great, and you look young. And I've reverted all the way to like as a little kid a few times, uh, just out of curiosity. And Robert Bruce has talked about, he says, if you actually stare at your body for an extended period of time, it will disappear because on the other side, it's sort of an illusion and you're actually mm-hmm. this ball of light. I'm like, mm, I'm not so sure about that, but let's try it. He was right. I stared at my hands and I watched them slowly dissolve and I became this all of light but yeah it's really cool because you're when you're out of body you're just you're in human form but you're glowing one time i was flying along this field and uh, i noticed there was a light shining on the ground below me this really beautiful kind of divine silvery gold light it's just really pretty i'm like wow where is that coming from and i turned around thinking you know maybe is there a ufo above me or something <laughs> Uh, but no, there wasn't. And I was puzzled. And I'm looking down again. And so I came in for a landing and realized, oh, that's me. That is my f- astral body illuminating this light. So, yeah, it's the things you can do are amazing. Walking through walls. I would always close my eyes when I did that. Finally, I'm like, okay, let's just leave your eyes open. And I saw this brick wall and I walked through it with my eyes open. Uh, there's all kinds of experiments you can do. Learning about past lives, that's amazing because uh, you, you're taken to the death scene in most cases. Any really profound emotional event, probably the most emotional event of that lifetime. Tell me, tell me more about like that. Like how many have you seen and wh- what's the sort of variety? Was, again, this is macabre, kind of a macabre qu- question, but I'm just curious. Uh, you know, how, like how yeah. far back can you in the kind of past past lives can you remember um and then how have you like how have you progressed through these experiences like is there like in other words is there a common arc right where you know i'm just making this up where you know you were a a warrior and then increasingly progressing maybe up a social structure or maybe down a social structure or maybe there is no maybe there is no arc maybe it's just random like Uh, you know, are there any commonalities that you can do? That's a weird question, but. No, no, I'm I'm not sure, honestly. 
I think there's just a wide variety of stuff that we all experience these different situations to learn. And, you know, people talk about past lives, but there's a movement towards calling them simultaneous lives. And that time is sort of an illusion. And you will learn this if you go out of body because time is not the same. You can go to the past, you can see the future. You will start having amazing precognitive events and visions and clairvoyance and telepathy that wakes you up in a really way. It's one of the best things about it because it affects you during the day uh, when you're alive on the physical plane. Um, it will affect this. But yeah, some, I'd pop out of body and sometimes I'd say, take me to a past life because this is what other people were doing. And other times it would happen spontaneously. But yeah, it can be alarming because uh, once uh, I was taken to the Holocaust and that was grim. I found myself being pulled onto a bus to a death camp and they ran you. I mean, I had no ch chance at all. They, we ran in lines and I was pulled up to a pit and they shot me in the back of the head uh, before I could do anything. It was very quick, but ugh. another time I called for a past life, I was standing in front of my house out of body. And I'm like, okay, I want to see a past life. And I saw this almost like a television screen come swooping down and it pulled me into it. And boom, I was a woman. And uh, that was weird. Uh, and uh, about to be raped and murdered. What time, uh, like what timeline? Yeah, I was trying to figure that out because there was cars. And I'm looking at the car thinking, well, it was at night, so I couldn't really see. But this car was coming towards me. A man was getting out and I was walking along the street and I'm trying to orient myself in time. But what happened was I remembered what happened. I remembered him coming up and, you know, holding a knife to my neck and doing horrible things. And I just didn't want to go through that because uh, it was traumatic. And so I did what I do if I want to stop an experience, which is unclenching and unclenching my hands, blinking and wiggling my toes. That brings you back to your body pretty quickly. So I don't know, 50s, I don't know. Uh, it's all very confusing to me because some of these seem to overlap in ways that would make it hard for me to understand. Could I be living two lives at once? Mm -hmm. uh, sort of thing. I don't know. It's very confusing. But yeah, I remember being on a ship that sank as a soldier, some much older lifetimes, which I say were a priest in medieval times. We um, Have you ever been in a situation or you like remember one of these prior experiences where you weren't a good guy <laughs> like, or a victim or, or, or something um, like that? I can't say or that I was really <laughs> out there hurting people. No, I don't remember anything like that. I do remember being a little Native American boy uh, in what I call the Wild West, I guess, 1800s. And boy, they treated us like crap. The, the white people looked, looked down on us like dogs. It was shocking. It was just a little one street dirt town. Uh, but it was a great lifetime. And that experience, I remember doing, going on a vision quest with what I would call the medicine man, mm -hmm. uh, sort of, which was awesome. That was one of the few cases where I wasn't taken to a death scene. I do remember another <laughs> past. I'm assuming these are past lives. Uh, I don't know for sure. All I know is what I've experienced, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I could think of a dozen different explanations for it, right? It could just be, um, it just could be a dream state. It could, which I, I, I doubtful. It could be that you're seeing other people's. Um, yeah. I think that our, I our, our past people have actually gotten information and gone to grave sites and, you know, been able to verify that these people actually existed. I have not been able to do that. I don't, don't usually get a whole lot of detail in terms of names and dates, but I do remember being in Civil War times where I was a young black man <laughs> around 18 or so, 16. And I had escaped and they caught me. And this was somewhere in the South and I was 
locked in his room, uh, which was very richly furnished. I'll never forget it. I was just amazed by the carpet and the mahogany and the chairs with the, you know, the red leather. I like, damn, this is the richest house I've ever been in because I lived in a shack with mm -hmm. a dirt floor and no food and nothing. You know, it's terrible being a slave. And I remembered it. And so I went up to the door to test the lock. And I was shocked to find out that they had not locked it. And I'm like, well, I'm going to go through the door, which was really <laughs> difficult to do uh, because you don't have a whole lot of self-esteem, right? Or courage. But I crept out and I saw the front door through a doorway in another room. And I made my way towards it and went through this to this other room and heard something, turned to my left, and there was an old woman on a rocking chair looking at me. I'm like, shoot, and I'm busted. <laughs> and I felt just an incredible terror until I looked at her face and she smiled at me lovingly and pointed to the door and said, you know, Jester, go, 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 go. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of emotion to that. I, and I will never forget this woman uh, for not ratting me out. And I ran from that house and never stopped running until I reached my family. And I had my big black mama, she was fat. Uh, and it turned out I was the oldest sibling and I saw my you know, four other kids. Yeah, it was a very emotional experience. Uh, and so you, we all have sort of desires and tendencies and phobias and things that will point to past lives. And you'll realize this when you uh, start doing it, because you know, I have this thing with ships and you know, shamanism and all these subjects I'm interested in would sort of manifest in these past lives. So that was one thing you can explore, but you, know, you can go to healing temples, you can visit deceased loved ones, you can do all kinds of stuff when you're out of body, exploring the world. It's incredible. I mean, I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, one time I lay down in bed and immediately started to feel the vibrations. And I'm awake. I'm lying there. I'm like, oh, my God. Because <laughs> normally I'll do a meditation and, or just spontaneously find myself out of body. Uh, and whenever I would start to go, I'd close my eyes because it's a little scary. So I'm like, well, it's already happening and my eyes are open. I'm just going to do it. I'm going to run with it. And I pulled myself out of body with my eyes open. And that's really amazing <laughs> because the world looks a little different when you're out of body. It's glowy and really a lot more beautiful. Uh, but ultimately, you get, I mean, you can explore the physical world all you want, but you're going to get pulled to the other side probably pretty quickly because that's the natural environment. And what do you define as the other side? Um, well, I would say it's hard to describe. This is mapped out in Eastern religions pretty clearly, but I can tell you my own experience is there's the physical world that you're in. You pop out of body and you're still in it, but it's sort of a duplicate. I'm not sure it's completely the exact same thing. It's the, sort of the astral counterpart to it. And this is a, a fairly low realm where there are a lot of earthbound souls wandering around and you will see them, uh, but you can go up levels and the lower levels are very much urban settings for the most part in my experience. And certainly this is, I think, verified by other people's accounts uh, where you'd find yourself in like a, a mall setting or a hotel or a city street uh, but as you go progressively higher, you reach a point where there's what I would call the garden realms or the heavenly realms or the other side, the standard definition of it, which is very much like is described in, you know, religious texts where there are animals and trees and flowers and gardens. And this is where I think most people do go. This is where I've seen pretty much well, not all, but most of my deceased relatives uh, have been in what I would call the garden realms. And you can go even higher than that to like the Akashic Library, 
which is something I read about, which is supposedly mm -hmm. where all your past lives are recorded and everything is recorded. I'm like, well, if other people went there, I can, I want to do it. And it took me several attempts, but I did it and it was amazing. So there are different levels to all of this. And yeah, I've been recently exploring the more, what I would call the hellish realms. You know, I'm not a religious guy, so I don't really put religious interpretations on this. But yeah, there are low realms where people are in agony or very much trapped in their own uh, psychological states of despair, perhaps, or addiction, or sorrow, or just not wanting to leave Earth, or are, are terrible people, murderers, you know, awful people. I've encountered some of them, <laughs> and it's that's probably the scariest times I've had. I can't say that it was really fearful because you can't be hurt when you're out of body, but when someone's coming towards you with evil intent. It is alarming to say the least. What do they try to do to you when you're, if they can't do anything to you? Uh, well, I never really stayed to find out, <laughs> uh, but I can tell you what I experienced is one time I popped out of my body here where I am right now in this home in uh, Reseda. And I'm like, oh, that's great. I made it. Every time I pop out, I'm like absolutely astounded. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, this is incredible. Why, aren't, why isn't everyone doing this? This should be taught in schools. Let's go. Uh, and usually I have a real good plan. Like I want to go to this location. I want to do something. And that is a really good idea because it will extend your experience. And this time I'm just sort of like wandering around and I'm like, okay. And I ran out into my front yard and I'm like, wow. And I saw these three guys walking down the street. And sometimes you will experience what are projections mental projections from your own mind and you can right. tell because they're not real people they're sort of wooden they're lifeless they're dull and you can instantly tell when it's a real person just by the quality of their presence and these three guys were clearly earthbound spirits uh, they were hoodlums i guess gangsters uh, murderers is what they look like to me and they're right in front of my house and I'm standing there on my doorstep and they're, you know, a hundred feet away, 50 feet away. And we lock gazes and I'm like, Oh, holy crap. Cause they don't look nice. They've got evil. No, they're evil, malicious grins on their face. And they come towards me real fast. And I'm like, Nope. Cause you know, you read about this and like, Oh, just extend light and love towards them. I'm like, mm, I'm not there yet. <laughs> These guys are coming towards me. So I just fled and went right back to my body. I just did not want to deal with it. Uh, another time, my friend Roger had passed away of alcoholism. And I thought, well, I'm going to see him because I almost always see whoever has passed away at some point. And it was a few weeks after he had passed. And uh, I spent spontaneously woke up out of body already. I didn't have to go through the whole process. Um, sometimes that happens. You just suddenly wake up. And I was in probably the lowest realm I've ever been in, which was just pitch black and dark and thick with negative energy. And poor Roger, my friend, was screaming in agony, saying, I'm not ready. Where am I? What's going on? help. I'm not ready for this. I'm not ready. And I swooped up to him. I'm like, Roger, it's me. You're going to be fine. I'm going to help you. I'm going to pray for you. I wasn't super experienced at crossing people over at this point. I, I, I later would do it a number of times. I think I had done it once at that point. Uh, and his strong emotion pulled me back in. But I prayed for him. I told a whole family, his family, to pray for him because that does help uh, if you just send thoughts of love to him and uh popped out of body and i'm like okay i'm gonna go find roger and you set the intention and your guides or your higher self i'm not, really not sure will take you there and i found him in an urban setting and uh there were streets cars buildings and he was behind this barrier this fence that i couldn't get to 
And these sort of things do happen a lot when you're out of body. There's corridors and tunnels and borders, which you hear about if you read about near-death experiences. People can't get beyond a certain level. I was trying to get to him, I couldn't. I'm like, Roger, it's me, Preston. And he spoke to me out loud in my head. He says, Preston, um, thanks so much for all the love bombs. Because um, I was really focusing on helping him. It's like, it really helped. I'm like, you're welcome. It's really good to see you. And this guy appeared who was not a nice guy and manifested a car and tried to run me over. I'm like, dude, what the heck are you doing? And I flew up, you know, as he tried to run me over. And I landed and he turns around and comes at me again. He starts running at me and trying to beat me up. I'm like, dude, what is your problem? Because I'm trying to get to my friend Roger. And I ended up just evading this guy for the next five or 10 minutes until I'm like, that's it, I'm leaving. And later I saw Roger, he was at a higher realm in a hospital setting in a bed. I was led to him and they're like, yeah, here's your friend. He's fine. We're going to help him. And so he eventually did fully cross over. Uh, but, Does anybody get trapped there? Um, yeah. I mean, you can't get trapped on the lower levels. Um, is, I that, heard, is that permanent or is that something that just. It's a problem. Over, it, it can, but is it, it over, can, over time like those individuals can get out of it or is it yeah. some people are just permanently trapped there forever um i would not say permanently forever but yeah can there are cases in the literature of people you know they're approached by some out-of-body traveler and they ask them what year it is oh it's 1860 <laughs> they've been there for 100 years trapped uh, i wanted to rescue a lost soul after reading about it and i was taken to this home, the crawl space. And there was a little girl, eight years old, maybe six, blonde, just a sweet little girl who was crying. And it broke my heart. And I instantly saw that she had been horrifically abused, assaulted, I'll say, you know what I mean, and murdered. And uh, she was just broken. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you poor thing. How are you all right? And she's just crying and looking at me. And quite scared of me because she doesn't know me i'm like it's gonna be all right it's gonna be all right would you like to fl you know fly let's i'll teach you how to fly and it turned out i had done this a number of times crossing people over and not even realize what i was doing so you know it's like hey I come upon a, a person i'm like i can show you how to fly and we'll go to the other side and uh realized i was crossing people over and but you no know, in hindsight and so I asked her to do that. And she's like, looking at me like I'm nuts. <laughs> like, what are you even talking about? Who are you? Go away. And I'm like, shoot, this is not working. And I hit upon another idea. I'm like, how would you like to see your mother? I can take you to see your mom. And her eyes lit up. She stopped crying for a second. And she's like, very wide eyed looking at me like, really? I'm like, yes, I can, I can help you. Here, take my hand. And uh, she did. And the second she took my hand, I made sure I had a good hold of her and off we went. And how I get to the other side is just flying straight up really fast with the intention of getting there. And you break through, I guess I call it the veil between the worlds. It's very hard to describe. It's like hitting a wall and then you pop, like diving into water kind of is what it feels like. But it's like diving into this crystal realm. Uh, it's a sort of a different vibration, a higher vibration. It's like popping through cellophane or something. And, uh, you know, they had talked about this in the literature. They said, probably right when that happens, they're going to let go and off they will go and you'll probably not be able to follow them. I'm like, oh, I'm going to follow. But no, I couldn't. She immediately let go and off she went. And I assume she went to her family. But yeah, since then, I've done that a few times. Following this pa pandemic, real quick, I, I wanted to explore these lower realms. And I'd end up in these like mall like settings or auditoriums or hotels. I don't know. People are wandering around and I'd ask questions. I'm like, are you dead? And they'd look at me like, yes, of course I am. What are you talking about? Oh, they, so they know. Yes. Yes. I asked about the pandemic and I'm like, what do you think of that? And they're like, oh, it's bad. It's bad. Just look. 
I'm like, oh shoot. So all these people died of you know, COVID, I, get, I don't know. But I'm wandering through this crowd of people once and looking at them and they're just normal. You know, they're talking, they're in groups, they're at tables. And I saw this one guy who looked you know, fairly happy, like really content and smiling. He's a big, tall black guy. And he just had an inner light to him. I'm like, I wonder what the hell he's doing here, you know? And I walked up to him. I'm like, hey, how are you doing? He's like, I'm fine. And he looked a little bit dazed, like a lot of these people are. I'm like, you know, there are better places than this. I could take you to a, the higher realm if you want. And he says, really? I said, yeah, yeah, I know where it is. I could take you there if you want. And he's like, can you really? I'm like, yeah, yeah, just take my hand and I'll take you there. And he was really reluctant to hold my hand because, you know, he's a guy, I'm a guy. And, uh, you know, guys are a little bit weird that way. I'm like, dude, you know, I'm just going to take you there. I'm not, you know, it's, that's all. I'll just take my hand and I'll show you. And he I finally agreed to do it. And uh, off we went. And I could tell because we were, got there because it starts to get really bright. And in those lower realms, there's lots of shadows and darkness. Whereas in the garden realm, there's, there are no shadows, period. It's never night there. It's bright, bright, bright. And everything glows with light. The flowers, the trees, the ground, the air, all of it, people. And this beautiful silver golden light surrounded us. And he's smiling. He's looking at me with great thanks. And off he went. It's amazing. So yeah, what doing... prevents people from you know, ascending to, to these higher realms? Is it just like is it mental or you know what? Yeah, um, skepticism. If you do not believe in life after death and you find yourself wandering around your house, can be very confusing for people. They don't realize they're dead. Uh, and if you're, you know, love your house, you don't want to leave it. Well, you're not going to leave it. Guilt. People feel like they don't deserve. You know, you're strong. The judgment uh, mostly comes from yourself. And so if you feel like you did wrong and wrong people, th this will prevent you from going to the other side. And uh, yeah, it's very What about murderers? What about murderers? Yep. I, th I think if you just go to the other side, you will be forgiven. It's hard to say completely. I don't have a whole lot of experience with what I would call murderers. Uh, but I do know just from studying near-death experiences that you will experience all the negativity you foisted upon other people. Uh, so it's a good idea so to it's do the right audit, thing. Like that life audit or whatever it's yeah. called. But yeah, there are these hellish realms, which I got interested in because other people were describing them. So another time I went there and I'm wandering through, the, again, this like mall-like setting. It's really bizarre. People are just kind of sitting there not ready to move full on to the other side. And I started asking people, you know, have you ever seen a UFO? And they look at me like, no, just like on earth, you know, what are you talking about? You're crazy. And I saw this, you know, asked several people about it. Finally, I found this guy. He's like, oh yeah, I saw one. I remember seeing one. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like, why am I asking about UFOs? You know, and uh, so I started asking people, you know. And just for the audience, we'll get to that in the next episode. <laughs> but uh, where um, these two I, things intersect. But keep yeah, going. So, I'm sorry to so interrupt. I, so it's, there's a lot of people there. They're of different ages. They're dressed normally. I mean, it's just a normal setting. But kind of dark and a little dreary, I guess. So I saw this kid who was 12, 11 years old, maybe. And he seemed like a nice little kid. So I walk up to him and I said, can I ask you a question? <laughs> and he said, sure. I says, are you dead? And he looked at me like I was out of my mind. And he said, yes, we all are. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shoot. I just, Cause I just wanted to confirm that, you know, where I was. Cause I didn't know, you know? And so I, I'm like, okay, thanks. And I walked around and I found another. Did, did you lit. tell him that you, you weren't? No, at that point, not yet, but just wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That's what Sorry. happens Sorry. next. I, I walked up to this, these ladies sitting at a table, and sort of elderly ladies, not super old, you know, 60s maybe. Uh, and uh, I'm like, do you guys mind if I ask you a question? And I said, sure. I'm like, 
are, are you dead? <laughs> and I got that same, like, are you crazy look? They're like, yes, of course we are. We all are. And I said, oh, well, I'm not. <laughs> and they all kind of looked at me, startled and stared at me. And not only that, every head around me swiveled and looked straight at me. Like I was some sort of, a, mm, I don't know, a weirdo. And it wasn't a nice look. Um, they started almost a little hostile because some of these guys are hostile. They, I, they, I was attacked when I went there. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, this, this guy came at me with a chair. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And I quickly picked up another chair. I'm like, stay away from me. What's wrong with you? I didn't do anything to you, but they were just angry people. But yeah, everyone turned and looked at me and I'm like, oh, shoot. Probably not a good idea, which I've learned. In subsequent times, yeah, probably don't tell people. So why, why the hostility? They're just hostile. You know, they're angry people. Uh, they're but, mad. But what, but what more, like, the fact that you are you weren't dead, um, why does that create ire? I couldn't tell you. It, I was actually quite shocked about it. Um, I think there's probably some jealousy, perhaps, or sorrow or a lot of emotion there like what is this guy who's alive doing here i don't know i can tell you they were shocked to to, to see me there and uh that's been my experience often i went to see my dad who i wasn't able to see for years and years and years and years and he i don't want to say he was abusive but he was a little bit emotionally abusive when we were young kids. He was very quick to anger. And uh, I th thought that probably was one of the reasons I was never able to contact him. But finally, I just got tired. I'm like, I need to see my dad. Cause, you know, once my mom died, he completely changed. He became loving and generous and the most amazing guy and very well loved and super helpful to the world. And he was an amazing guy. So I couldn't understand what was going on with him. And I really wanted to find out where he was. And finally, I'm popped out and I'm like, okay, I'm going to find my dad come hell or high water. I'm going to find him. And uh, I'm like, take me to my dad. I'm going to see my father right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, ended up in this weird hotel like setting. A lot of people I'm wandering around. Does anyone know James Dennett? <laughs> I need to see Jim Dennett. Do you know a James Dennett? And no one, they're all looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, he's got to be here. I can feel him. And I saw a table up ahead, with, you know, three or four guys. And there was my dad. And I quickly ran up to him and I looked at him and I was shocked to see that he would look old and bald and fat like he was when he died. I'm like, dad, I'm unfiltered. You know, I'm kind of a brutally unfiltered guy anyway. <laughs> I have a tendency to be a little inappropriate here on earth <laughs> because I'm just brutally honest uh, at times. And it's, people are like, you know, Preston, what are you doing? Can't talk, you know, I will ask people how much you make, you know, or about sex or just brutally honest. I'm unfiltered, right? I'm, I'm the same way. I'm definitely <laughs> the same way. I, I definitely filter it a lot for this show, but I, yeah. Yeah. I'm the at same work, way. I, at work, I've gotten myself in trouble. <laughs> And my, yeah. family, my family is used to it. They call me inappropriate press. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I just, like, you can't ask people these questions. I'm like, well, why not? Right. Um, and so I run up to my dad. I'm like, dad, you look so old. <laughs> and he looks at me sharply. He's like, oh, thanks a lot. I'm like, oh, shoot. Sorry, you know, I didn't mean that. <laughs> and I'm like, how are you? And he refused to look me in the eye. And he kept avoiding my questions. And I could see guilt just radiating off of it. And he was guilty for the way he treated me as a young kid uh, for, you know, getting angry for no darn reason so quickly. So that's what was stopping him from ascending? That is my perception. He didn't say it, but I started to get angry at him. I'm like, look at me when I'm talking to you. <laughs> that's what I told him, <laughs> which was a funny turnaround because that's what he used to say. <laughs> and he did. He looked at me and he... I could see the sadness in his eyes. I'm like, Dad, it's okay. You know, you're fine. You know, I, I forgive you. And uh, 
he seemed really awkward and uncomfortable uh, with me confronting him. And so I didn't want to push him any farther. And uh, some people led me away. And I asked them about COVID because I was very interested. And they're like, oh, it's bad. It's bad. That's always the answer I get. And one guy. Because yeah, they just see new souls coming in in large numbers. I guess. One guy started screaming out, the jab, the jab, the jab, the jab. What is wrong with you? It's, a lot of these people aren't super emotionally mature. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, very weird. Uh, yeah. What do they do? Like, what do they, how do they spend their time if that's even? Well, on the other side, on the garden realms, it's lots of fun. There's concerts, there's classes, there's uh, parties, uh, there's gardens. You build yourself a little home, and it's amazing. It's just, you relax, you go to the beach. Uh, I did that. I'm like, let's just, you know, let's not do anything. Let's just lay down and go swim. You can go into water and swim on the upside it's amazing the water is so silky and you come out and you're completely dry it's amazing just recently literally days ago my nephew passed away very Pretty very good. sad yeah thank you and i'm of course devastated i was you know our family is quite close and he was quite young 40 years old and i'm just heartbroken as we all are and usually you know i'll wait days or weeks uh, because there's an orientation but th that night i had an obe the day he died and uh i went to his parents and i'm like oh gosh i hope you're okay they're very got a very strong love bond and i saw them i'm like i'm going to go see if i can find james this is another instance where i'm talking to people and they don't remember it and uh, i'm like i'm gonna go see your son and uh off i went and i found myself in this tunnel a corridor very much like people describe in a near-death experience it was a long narrow dark corridor with people in it some were like trapped there i'm like looking at them I'm like oh gosh you know like, i could see a light at the end like they describe it was a couple hundred feet away so i'm just trotting through this very narrow hallway like I'm, I'm just going to keep going. I can't stop to help these people. I don't have much time to remain aware. You can kind of feel how much awareness you have to be able to proceed forward. So I just kept going forward and I popped out into this really bright room filled with people. And it was a slightly lower realm, but very close to what I would call the garden realms, but not quite there. And hundreds of people there, very big, wide auditorium people milling around, all newly deceased. I could tell somehow you get impressions, right? And uh, there was a lady sitting at a desk right at the entrance and she's looking at me smiling, dark hair, nice lady. And I could tell she was a greeter, a coordinator, a guide. And so I walked up to her, I'm like, maybe you can help me. I'm looking for my nephew. His name is James Rahula. That's his middle name. And she said, yes, turn around. He's right behind you. Uh, and I'm like, oh, and I turned around. So you basically <laughs> guided him in maybe. Yeah, I think he was waiting for me. Um, I don't know, hard to say, but uh, they sensed you coming. I, I don't know. I really honestly don't know. Uh, but you can go meet your deceased relatives. It's not hard to do. They're there waiting for you. They're watching over you. They know what you're thinking. You have a completely different perspective on the other side. And uh, there he was. And I'd forgotten how tall he was. He's over six feet tall. You know, I'm five nine. I'm like, whoa, James. <laughs> I hadn't seen him in a couple of years. And uh, he looked amazing, bright, glowing with bright light. People on the other side stand very erect. They're very, you know, his chest was thrust forward. He's very hale and healthy. I'm like, wow, you look amazing, James. I... I love you. Or so I said, how are you doing? You know, I really love you. Or I love you. How are you doing? He's like, Preston, I love you too. And I'm actually really good. I'm fine. It's, I'm, I'm actually really good. And he, he, he was grabbing my hands and he's squeezing them, to, you know, as he's talking, letting me know that he's real. And it's just really overwhelming. To, it's very overwhelming. 
because he had just passed. And to see him and know he's there is very comforting and unbelievably amazing. He's just pressed, and I just want you to know I've been looking at your videos on your YouTube channel, which was funny to me because you know I want to talk about him, right? And he's trying to comfort me, which is him. You know that's what he does. He's a very like compassionate in life guy. he was doing it, or in death he was looking at them. That that was exactly what my thought was. I'm like, huh? Are you? I'm like, I was going to ask him that, but I was so shocked to hear him say that <laughs> that I just kind of absorbed it. Because I, you know, when you see someone who's recently passed on, all you want to do is hold them and hug them and just soak up their presence because you love them so much and you're missing them and you just want to just be there with them. And uh, I would ask my mom all kinds of questions, but. Then I was, it was just so new and raw that I just wanted to be there with him. And to hear him say that was like, damn, James, really? You're talking about me? But it really made me feel good uh, to know that he was thinking about me. It's like, yeah, yeah, I really love him, man. You're doing such a great job. It's important what you're doing. And I really loved that one with the one where you described the UFO and had blue and yellow lights. I knew which one he was talking about. <laughs> It was a relatively recent one. I'm like, James, thanks. And I was just so overwhelmed by it that I got pulled back. Uh, but man, oh man, it was so good to see him. Um, that was just two, three days ago, the, the day he died. So now, man, did you I, do that OBE with intention or were you just kind of, it, it spontaneously happened? No, it was very much intentional. I went to bed that night thinking, I'm going to try. You know, it's probably early, but I'm just going to try and do it, see if I can. And it was, went to bed and sometime around like three or four, 5 a.m., I woke up. And that's when it works for me because I'm super relaxed. I usually just get up, go to the bathroom, come back and instantly feel, feel that heaviness of sleep overtaking me. I'm like, okay, now's the time. Now's the time. Do it, do it, do it. And you whoosh out and boom, off you go. Now, during the course of these um, experiences, have you ever experienced any non-human entities? Um, and, and I don't, we'll get to kind of UFOs and things like that in the next episode. But what I'm talking about is things that would traditionally be categorized as like angels or demons or, or whatever folklore of you know, whatever culture you're, you're focused on might um, group something that's non-human? Um, not a whole lot. Pets, yes. When our pets passed away, I saw them frequently in the garden realm or the other side. Our dog, Maxine, uh, saw her recently. And it's been, what, 30, 40 years uh, since she passed. But yeah, she'd often come up to me and lick me, which she never did. She was a very reserved dog. <laughs> you, know, you ask her to give her your paw, her paw, and she would like think about it. And like, all right, fine. <laughs> But there, she's very much rambunctious. And the most recent time, or one of the most recent times, she came running up to me and shocked, knocked my socks off. Could not believe it. She came running up to me. She says, hi, Preston. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Did I just hear this? Do you talk? And I had to do some research into this. because I'm like, gosh, am I going out of my mind here? But no, apparently, yeah, pets can learn to talk to a certain degree. So yeah, lots of animals. Uh, Never saw an angel in the traditional sense. Though, mm, gosh, I even hesitate to mention this because it's so bizarre and like, uh, but I will tell you, I, um, I was just, gosh, do I even want to go there? Go there, Preston, <laughs> go there, Preston. Well, I'm not a religious guy, right? Um, yeah. I, be I believe in source. And uh, look, I I'm using angels and demons in the sense that, um, not in a religious sense, just in things that a religion would put in those buckets, but I don't know what yeah. they would be or what they are. Well, I had a recent experience this year, uh, which I always wondered about angels, you know, and a few times I actually called out like, Jesus, Jesus, I'd like to see you, Jesus, because that would be cool, right? Uh, but it never worked. Uh, and then one time I'm just flying around. Uh, often I'll find myself in Topanga where I grew up over where I first became lucid. And this is a thing. 
often you will wake up where you first had your first out-of-body experience. Uh, and this is in the literature for sure. So often I'll find myself in the field behind my dad's house. And, and I did. I'm flying around for whatever reason and saying, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for the next step, right? I'm ready. And this spirit guide appeared and says, well, if you're really ready, if you really want to call him down, here's how you do it. And showed me this weird ritual, <laughs> which involved weird hand movements and uh, which he demonstrated for me. And he said, this will call him down. And so I did it. And down came, <laughs> down came Jesus, uh, honest to God, in his flowing robes, a beard. Uh, reddish hair, uh, slightly darker skin than I expected, a much longer face, not quite as beautiful and handsome as he's often portrayed, but radiating with this unbelievable light and love. And yeah, again, I'm not really, I've never been to church. My parents rebelled against religion. They would not take me. They took my older brothers, but I was not religiously trained at all. Yeah, and look, even if even even if you're Muslim or a Buddhist, Jesus is still a religious figure, as as Buddha is, as um, Muhammad is, right? So, you know, regardless of um, where you are in this on, the, on that spectrum, he is a historic, like a, an actual historical figure and prophet. Yeah, um, that's kind of how I thought of him as an enlightened individual yeah. who came down to earth and spread love and light. Is how I kind of. So I was sort of brought up as an atheist, which reversed when I started having out of body experiences. I realized, oh my gosh, there is source. There's, you know, to me, that God is life, the universe, and everything, and all of love and sort of the aware universe, the all mind. Yeah, and look, look, you can even you can even come up with a scientific explanation for all this, right? You could, you know, we didn't know about nuclear um, energy or like the strong and weak nu- nuclear force for quite some time, right? You can't see radiation, right? Um, right. But it exists. You can't see uh, you know, electromagnetism at times. You can't see the there's radio waves bouncing back and forth everywhere, right? Um, we didn't know about that, I don't know, 300, 300 years ago. Um, but we've been able to confirm you know, this existence. So I can posit and you know without without evidence right or i could speculate let's just say that um reality as we know it is only a tiny fraction of a broader reality so, so to speak uh you know if you think about uh plato's projection on the cave wall of what you know an elephant looks like or, or whatever right we might just be seeing a small fragment of reality and it's only available to mm-hmm you know, our five or you could add a six sense, like kinesthetic sense and, and things like that, that we only are re- like the, the fragment of reality that we observe is just based on our sensory organs of what we can observe. There is, there are other realities that we simply don't see because we don't have the organs, the sensory organs to, um, you know, to, to perceive them. So there is, you know, I, again, I could speculate about maybe, maybe we're just in a certain um, reality that vibrates at a certain frequency. And if you just turn the channel, um, you can ascend to other realities that vibrate at higher frequencies or vice versa, lower. Yeah. The physical universe is vast. I mean, we know this from just the Hubble telescope, but boy, it doesn't hold a candle to the vastness of the other side and the these realms but yeah so right and similarly we could we could quote arthur c clark right to any like any sufficiently advanced civilization um you know millions of years in the future would look like magic to us yeah. so there might be you know th- th- there might be a scientific explanation behind that there might be a fifth force that we're just not aware of like gravity and uh, uh the weak nuclear force the strong nuclear force and electromagnetism there might be something else that we just haven't been able to independently verify yet. So, you know, I'm not saying it's spiritual. I'm not saying it's scientific. There's just things, things that we've just not figured out yet that we still need to figure out. And I don't know the answer, but 
uh, you know, uh, you know, in, in this particular experience, I definitely want to get back to it because I don't, you know, I'm sure the audience is being left on a cliff right now, and I'm and I'm talking. <laughs> I know. I'm just like, I'm, like Sean, I'm, shut I'm, up, I'm, Sean, I'm shut up, stop talking. <laughs> I want to finish this. Stop talking. Well, no, but I'm trying to. <gasps> I'm trying to um, help legitimize it in a certain sense that you don't. People don't they're just like, oh God, it's the Jesus thing again. Let's just drop. Let me let me drop off. Um, this is an experience that you believe you had. Um, and it's something that is worth sharing and that people will be interested in. It might, frankly, it might give, bring comfort to a lot of people. So going back, <laughs> this figure appears that is, it is referring to themselves as Jesus. Um, what happened? Yeah. I was very wary about it. Trust me. Well, I'm no, not, I, I, no, look, I, I'm I, not, re- I'm not a religious guy, uh, but other out of body travelers talked about this and seeing yeah. who they perceived was Jesus. So I thought, gosh, you know, sometimes this could happen to me. I have to be prepared. What if this happens? How am I going to feel about it? Because I, uh, mm, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it happened. Well, all I can tell you is he didn't say, no, I'm Jesus. But you could tell. I mean, it was obvious to me. That was my perception. And yeah, he was a, um, I think you'd have all kinds of questions. But uh, when you're confronted and I've, had this experience of being in the presence of what I would call a highly evolved person, a spirit, someone who's truly enlightened, because they glow and they're just radiating love and wisdom and unbelievable spiritual maturity. And this guy was off the charts with it. I mean, I don't know. I can't say for sure who he was. This was my perception. But he was tall, wearing robes, beard, mustache, long hair. (laughs) reddish brown and radiating love to a degree that was very hard to handle actually very very humbling and uh, all the questions i had are out the door because it's just difficult to maintain your composure in the presence of someone of that magnitude Uh, but it was awesome and uh, it was very brief really just moments and it was all i could take (laughs) i just couldn't handle much more than that but yeah, any I have in, any insights you got from that experience. Um, uh, I got the impression that I was doing, I was a good guy. That was his sort of message to me. Like you're, you're fine. You you're, are a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> you are a good guy. You're, you're, you're... Well, you know, we all have self doubt. <laughs> I think we all struggle a little bit with, uh, you know, um, self image or, you know, what forgetting the exact word i want to use but uh, confidence yeah self-confidence uh but his message was you are fine the way you are you are absolutely great have no worries you are loved like, you're oh, definitely wow. you're definitely loved I, like i i i mean i even like you look at your channel right the comments you get even my channel i get like never never a negative word always positive Oh. Like a hundred percent positive comments and and things like that. So, um, but going on, yeah, th- there are two other examples of non-human that were pretty interesting. One time, I'm trying to get to the other side, and how, like I said, I go straight up, flying really fast, and then you hit this foggy realm, which is all kind of, I don't know, just filled with clouds and mist and just different. And some, I was just hitting that when something grabbed my ankle my lower leg and it didn't feel human (laughs) it felt like i don't even know like a golem like a little sticky little demonic spirit or something it wasn't human it had four fingers for one thing and they were long and membrane-y and weird and i'm like what the heck robert monroe talks about this actually little lemur like beings Oh, like the th- I think he subsequently described them as they ended up being like his cats or something like that earlier on, I, or later later in the later book. But I can't. It's been a right. while since I've read them. Yeah, I'll have to look that, that up. I do remember. Something but they on like lines, like but... jumped on him and like were like struggling with him, and he was nervous yeah. about it. Yeah. Well, at any rate, I this thing is slowing me down. And I'm going slower and slower. I'm like, what is this? So I reached down and I could feel its fingers. And I, and I trace my 
hand up its arm. I'm like, ooh, that thing is skinny. <laughs> that is not human, whatever this is. I'm like, what are you? And I peeled one finger off and then another. And it's trying to get back on. And I peeled the, you know, four, two fingers on each side. And I just peeled it off and kept trying to help grasp on. <laughs> Finally, true. bless you. Uh, peeled it all off and off I went on my merry way. And I wasn't scared for whatever reason. I just feel fine when I'm on the other side. But it was weird. And uh, the only other time I've ever seen anything, what I'll call not human, was I was having a problem with ghostly activity in my house. Uh, and people say, oh, you know, you can bring spirits back to you when you astral travel. Maybe that's a possibility. I've never had a problem with it. Um, the pers a person did die in this house before I bought it. Thought maybe that was it. But... I kept going to the library, you know, you know, where I keep all my books. I have this is a little two bedroom house, eight hundred square feet, and I have one tiny little room filled with books, mm -hmm. <laughs> wall to wall, right? All my UFO books and ghost books and you know books on ships and stuff. And I'd open the door and the light would be on. I'm like, well, that's impossible because I know I don't leave lights on. You know, you can see them at night anyway. It happened five times. And the fifth time, not only was the light on, but the, the ceiling fan. And I'm like, all right, who's doing this? You know, stop doing this. What are you? And I had some friends who are mediums, contactees. And they said, you know, you have ghosts in your house. I can see them. And you're kidding. And I said, no, there's a couple of guys there I see. I'm like, really? And uh, two people told me this. And so I thought, hmm, I wonder if this is true. I popped out of my body one day and usually I'll go off to the other side or something, but I'm like, hey, wait, let's see if my house is truly haunted or not. <laughs> is there anybody really in here? And I went to the library, nobody's there, the kitchen, going to the bathroom. And that's when I saw a reflection in the mirror of someone standing behind me in the hallway. And I whirled around and looked at this guy who was my height, five, nine or so. Um, and sort of a, not a, that guy, but he wasn't skinny. He was sort of stocky, I guess, brown hair, uh, round face, and uh, a nice looking guy. And he wasn't, didn't look scary or evil or anything. I'm like, who the heck are you? What is your name? He says, oh, my name is Mac. I'm like, oh, well, Mac, I don't know what you're doing in my house, but I don't think you should be here. I you know there's another so, side. So were you out of body when this happened or were you? Okay. Yes. All right. I just wanted to establish that. Yeah, I was out of body, and I'm really surprised to see him. And I grabbed him by the arm. I'm like, you should probably go. I don't know what you're doing in my house, but there are better places for you. And I led him outside and t told him basically, that, you know, there's a, the other side. You should go there. You'll have much more fun. Trust me. And I went back inside and explored the house and found another guy. I'm like, what's your name? And I think, I think he says, my name is Bill. He was taller, skinnier, a little bit more old, older looking. And uh, I'm like, Bill, <laughs> this is not the place for you. I don't know what you're doing here. I kind of regret it now because they weren't bothering me. But I let him out. And as I let him out, I saw something I don't even understand. There was this other creature, which wasn't, I mean, I don't even know how to describe it. It was sparkly with purple and white and gold sparkles coming off of it. And it was round, it was not fully physical, I guess. And I'm staring at it and this thing is wandering around looking at me like it's this weird interdimensional being. I have no idea what it was. And he didn't it, have eyes or anything like that. It was just a, like a, a sphere. Um, it was a more o oval, kind of, almost a body, but not quite. And it didn't have arms and legs, but otherwise, didn't have a head it was just sort of a thing so uh, that was very strange how did it make uh, you feel great it was very high energy it was a wonderful a positive thing yeah i i w really wanted to explore it more but uh got pulled back into my body but just one quick end note to all this once i did pop out shortly after this on the other side and i'm going through again this weird mall like setting and just wandering around, there's people, and we're all, you know, this is the other side. And I see this kid who catches my eye. He's like, 
I don't know, eight years old, walking with a couple of other people. And for some reason, he just looks familiar to me, but I cannot place him. And I walk up to him and I'm looking at him. He's, he sees me. <laughs> and he says, my name is Mac and I love you. And I'm like, oh, Mac, the dude in my house. <laughs> But he's, you know, now I realize why I recognize him, but he was young, 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 young. And I says, oh, I love you too. And, and we kind of just shook hands, I think. I don't think we actually hugged, but I do believe we shook hands and uh, just moved on. But I'm like, wow, that, that's Mac. I got, he crossed over. It's awesome. And he said, I love yeah, you. He, cro <laughs> he crossed over, though, into the lower realms, it sounds like. Yeah, but it, it's a really nice place. I mean, these okay. places have marble floors and beautiful. Oh, even, the, even, even some of the lower realms are like that? Yeah, these are the upper lower realms. Okay. I mean, there's these really dirty kind of urban settings like L.A. on a bad day, a gangster, land, you know, a rough neighborhood. And then there's realms that are higher, which are like mall-like settings or auditoriums and buildings and then there's a realm above that which is much like fairly fancy hotels in las vegas with marble floors and crystal chandeliers and it's really nice that's where i found my dad that's where i found this guy mac uh, it's just a really nice place but still not there's still shadows and people kind of a little dazed and confused uh, that's where i found J my nephew james was in one of those upper lower realms you know what i mean uh which looked like a greeting center for me where there were a lot of people who had just passed mm -hmm. but yeah i haven't met a whole lot of what i would call um, non-human spirits other than animals never saw an angel with wings or anything like that but i haven't set that intention i mean there's so much to do when you're out of body i mean i'm a, U I'm a ufo guy and we can get into that but yeah, we are. Uh, we, we definitely are. Uh, Next episode. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's all kinds of things you can do. I mean, I heard about people visiting Area 51. I'm like, well, I'm putting that on my list. And I eventually did it. And we'll discuss and, that one. <laughs> <on the> next. <laughs> and, uh, you know, did all kinds of, you know, exploring Earth. Uh, sometimes I just said, like, take me where you think I need to go to my spirit guides or my higher self. Uh, and that was amazing because I've ended up in what I perceived to be Olympic National Forest or a rainforest in Washington, just this place of incredible life energy, just beautiful trees and ferns in this river. And I found myself standing in the center of it, just soaking up this life force energy. I'm like, wow, I didn't need to be here because you know, life on earth is draining and difficult and depressing. That's that's the only real danger <laughs> with out of body experiences. If I'm going to say there's any danger to it. It's coming back and being a little depressed and homesick. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, it is so nice on the other side. It is so nice that you come back and you're like, oh, mm, this is not easy, and it makes you really homesick. But on the other hand, it makes life a lot easier as well because you know you're getting. They're going to get to go home one day and it's going to be, that makes me want to swear, <laughs> effing fantastic. <laughs> if I'm, uh, on that note, thank you very much, Preston, again, for sharing your very valuable time with me and the audience. Stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to discuss some of Preston's out-of-body experiences as they relate to his main area of expertise, which is as a UFO researcher. So thank you again, Preston, and we'll talk soon. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.